Good afternoon, everyone. The Mackinac Bridge Authority will now be called to order. Today's date is August 10th, 2021. And if I could have our bridge director call the roll, please. Yes, here. Yes. Here. Here. Thank you, Kim. Members, we have the agenda before you right now. Uh, is there any additions or corrections? If not, a motion to approve would be in order. I move to approve. Second. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes. Okay, we'll put, uh, can we put that as, as number nine under uh, new business Council director? Council Thank, you, sir. Thank you. We have one addition to the agenda. Uh, is there any other additions? Hearing none, all in favor of the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, before we go into public comment. Our vice chair, Amy Trahey, is asked to have the floor. Amy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you for your love and your prayers and your support. They are deeply, deeply felt. Um, you know, Brian was just, I can't find the right adjective, but just a phenomenal man, husband, father, friend, and he was just the most technical, capable, underwater bridge inspection diver that this state has had the privilege of having worked for and, and do what he does. And I just, I say that with humble confidence because last year in 2020, when we had the pandemic, we did a clean sweep on all underwater inspections in the state of Michigan. So Superior Region, Bay Region, North Region, Grand Region, University Region, Metro Region, it, and it's a testament to his capabilities and you know, not to be under under lightened by the Blue Water Bridge underwater inspections, the, the International Bridge underwater inspection, and our crown jewel, the Mackinac Bridge. He's, I'm just, I'm so proud of him and everything he's done to ensure the safety of Michigan's bridges. So again, thank you. I just wanna let everyone know your, your love and prayers are felt and we're gonna be okay. We're gonna survive, but we're, more than that, we're gonna thrive because we're gonna lead by his example. So. Thank you very much for the time, Chairman, for those remarks. Thank you, Amy, and uh, always know that Brian and you and your entire family will be in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Anyone from the public wishing to have public comment? Any, anybody from the public? Hearing none, uh, we'll move right along with the Agenda under number three, we have a action item for several minutes. Uh, the Infrastructure Deck Replacement Committee meeting July 8, 2021. We also have the Finance Committee meeting July 8, 2021. The official board meeting July 9th, 2021. And the official meeting closed session July 9th, 2021 as well as the insurance committee meeting August 3rd, 2001. I think it would be appropriate if you uh, deem necessary to have one motion to include all the minutes, but if you choose, we'll do them individually. What's your pleasure? I'll make a motion to approve them in mass, I guess. Thank you. That way. Is there support to that motion? Second. It's been moved and supported that the minutes be approved as mentioned for all the uh, committee meetings in the official board meeting. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Under old business, Kim, we had Tower Tours informational. Okay, thank you. 
Um, I just uh, have a little bit of information to bring up about tower tours because uh, with the COVID restrictions loosening up somewhat in the past months, we've been getting lots of questions about tower tours starting up again. So the problem as is detailed in your packet here um, is basically because the rules for state employees are, um, the vaccinations are not mandated. So some of our employees are vaccinated, some are not. Our patrons as well, some are vaccinated, some are not. And um, it's very difficult to, it's impossible to social distance doing a tower tour in the elevator. So we're asking our employees that basically have no public com contact to get in an elevator with somebody who may or may not be vaccinated. So it's just a lot of issues to work out with uh, the COVID requirements. So um, we're keeping them suspended right now. And I also included in your packet information about the charity tours. Normally we draw 25 names each August of charities that um, express an interest in getting a certificate that they can use for fundraising. And so we suspended that last year because we never got to do the tours from the 2019 drawing. And so now we've suspended it again this year because we still have all those tours from 2019 that we have to make up. And so, um, you know, there's probably 500 names in the bucket right now getting ready for this next drawing that we'll have uh, next year. So it's a very popular program, but it is, uh, it is also suspended for now. So I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, any questions of Kim? Okay. Under new business, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to call on our chair of the insurance committee, uh, Member Kinley, if you would uh, please report of the action of the committee. Okay. Thank you. So, oh, excuse me, turn this on. So, uh, I would first like to just give a quick recap. I know we discussed. Um, or, or, or I gave a, an update at the July meeting, also for the benefit of our vice chair, um, who was not able to be with us at that time. I'll do a, just a quick recap of how we got to where we are today and the happenings of our most recent uh, insurance subcommittee meeting last week. So as we discussed in July, uh, MBA is up for reviewing, renewing our auto insurance quotes effective October 1. So we do have some business we will need to conduct today at, at minimum on that, that end. Um, but as a part of our first two insurance subcommittee meetings prior to July, we decided we needed to do a deep dive on the programs that we're currently providing customers, which include window escort, a driver's assistance for those um, uneasy or a little squeamish to go over in their own car over the bridge, uh, walkers, bikers, and snowmobilers. Um, our insurance has gone up 55% over the last five years, which sounds dramatic. Um, it is, I think, as a course of action, we probably should also be, staff had recommended reviewing our insurance every two years operationally, so it's probably a good housekeeping measure. Um, so some of that increase was just normal insurance increased, but also because there is some liability and risk associated with the programs that we are providing. So as a consequence, we decided to delay uh, an action on the insurance quote and instead start doing a little deeper dive on the risks and liability to the bridge authority of those programs and also ask the uh, insurance carriers to resubmit quotes based on not including driver's assistance program. So in your packet, that's one of the documents, you have uh, some quotes submitted both with and without. Um, interestingly, when we re-quoted or you know, re-upped a, a second round, we only got one additional quote, which is significantly different than the others. Um, as a side note, you'll see that that was a question we wanted to answer was how much is it costing us in insurance to either provide driver's assistance or not. And I think you'll see from the quotes, it's actually not that significant a difference when you compare. 
So that was one thing we looked at, that on the margins, it's not that expensive for us. If we chose to continue that program, it's not costing us a significant amount of insurance money. Um, so that was one thing that we observed in requoting those. But also, the subcommittee last week, we did have a robust discussion about the programs. Um, so I will say we do have a recommendation and we do have business we do need to, to do in terms of accepting a quote. Um, we have a recommendation on one of those, but I, I maybe should first, before we leap to that, Mr. Chairman, and stop me, I, I think we want to make sure that the full board understands a little bit of our, our subcommittee discussion before we just put that recommendation on the table. Um, Please proceed then. Okay. So uh, we did have a robust discussion about the four, we, uh, about four programs. Staff did an excellent job, and it's included in your package of material in breaking down four programs. We chose earlier not to really investigate, if you will, the wind escort program because that involves high 18 wheelers, high campers that we really need to make sure are escorted across the bridge in a very slow manner. And so for safety reasons, we decided we were not even going to consider, reconsider um, dismantling that program because it is such a safety concern. So the four programs we looked at were the driver's assistance program, the snowmobile program, uh, the walking pedestrian program, and biking program. And in basically all of those cases, we are helping individuals, their snowmobiles, their bikes, get across the bridge by either driving their car or loading their snowmobile, loading their bike. So staff did an excellent job in breaking down the labor costs associated with each of those programs and some of the, uh, how they operate, where, where the snowmobilers are picked up, where they're dropped off, et cetera, how they're loaded onto our own bridge authority vehicles. And so they have detailed those in your documents and then also looked at the cost that we are currently charging or not charging in some cases and what that means in terms of breaking even. So I won't go through all of those, but uh, I, I think you will be able to see from each document, in some cases, uh, like snowmobiles, we're pretty much breaking even. In some cases, we're not coming close to breaking even. Um, and we're providing a very nice service, but for free, and that may be what we want to do or not, but they've detailed that. In addition, they've laid out some of the concerns associated with each of the program. Um, so we had a nice discussion, robust discussion about that. Uh, I do wanna mention that our legal counsel provided input in terms of our liability from the Bridge Authority and MDOT's perspective. And Kathleen, please jump in, but I think the conclusion was that our liability is, is quite low in this case, in all cases. Correct, there is definitely liability um, when we haul other people's, like the snowmobiles, pedestrians, uh, bikes, simply because we are using an MBA vehicle but that liability can still be reduced greatly by making the owners sign a liability waiver. Um, as for uh, the program where MDOT drives a person or an MBA employee drives a person's car across the bridge, there's very little liability because it's not an MBA vehicle involved. Okay, so. that's great. So that, that was very helpful in framing it from our mind that um, going forward, there still may be some necessity to, to review, again, the waiver forms that we have, but at the moment we feel pretty comfortable in any fine tuning we just might want to make going forward. So, um, so we wanted to have a preliminary discussion with the board about uh, these different programs. Right now they are suspended, all of them. 
uh, due to the COVID restrictions. So that suspension has just been maintained in place. Um, we contemplated and thought that um, when we get to the point of, of discussing a, an insurance quote, we have a recommendation from the subcommittee. Our sense was that all of these programs from a risk and liability standpoint should remain intact in some shape or form. So that was from the insurance side, we felt like they should remain intact. Uh, from the fee side, if the board so chooses and, and agrees that they need to be reviewed, we could send those programs, if you will, over to the Fairs, Fees, and Collections Committee and have the Fairs, Fees, and Collections Committee review whether our current fee structure is appropriate or keep it the same, modify it, bump it up, et cetera, so that we kind of have our action item today of getting the insurance quote done. Our suggestion is to maintain the programs and then have the fares, fees, and collections committee look at that uh, structure uh, prior to, say, the October meeting. The other aspect um, I don't want to overlook was that we also had a suggestion from member Director Ajiba for uh, looking at the driver's assistance program, and I think hopefully I haven't left that more of that out, Director, um, and considering uh, have developing an RFQ for some other companies to look at taking over that program. So we wanted to discuss that as well. In your packet, you'll see that staff did do some outreach looking at other towing companies and whether they would or wouldn't provide any of these services. Um, interestingly, we have companies in the St. Ignace, Mackinac City area that seem very willing to do the snowmobile service, less willing to do the other parts of the service. Um, so that was useful, but we still had that suggestion from our subcommittee member about whether we should uh, have an RFQ developed to actually see if there's takers for, at minimum, the driver's assistance program, better costs, less headache, et cetera. So um, that's, that's really it. I, w I think I'll leave it at that, Mr. Chairman. I, I mean, I'll say for the subcommittee, I admit I came in, or for the rest of the board, I came into our discussion last week um, with a pretty strong mindset that I was concerned about keeping the driver's assistance program where an employee drives a customer's vehicle across the bridge for them. I was very concerned at the outset. I had my mind made up. The employee safety is, is our top priority and I was uneasy about that. Um, I also saw the fee structure and thought we need to increase fees. By the end of our meeting, I had changed my mindset dramatically because I do want to point out, I'd be overlooking, that the staff have some very good creative ideas for how to improve that per program in particular, how to improve the, the employee safety, uh, whether it's through a checklist, a dash cam, a body cam, increase in the fees. They've come up with some really good ideas. So. My mindset changed quite dramatically from the beginning of our subcommittee to the end, um, and that's why I felt comfortable that with some changes, we would be well positioned to continue these programs or consider an RFQ if, if the board so chooses. And I Thank think you. that's it. Thank you very much. Before I open it up for uh, discussion with the board members, uh, we have Cammie uh, on video, I believe. And she has put a lot of work in this, collecting the, the bids and everything. I, I would just like to ask Cammie if she's got anything she'd like to add to our chair's uh, proposal today. No, I don't think so. I think she covered it um, really well. Um, I appreciate all of um, her input as well because I, have, I personally have learned a lot about um, insurance over the last couple of months, <laughs> probably more than I um, should know, um, but um, she's, she recapped it very well. Well, thank you, Cammie, and thank you for all the good work and the assistance that you've done here on these bits. 
You're welcome. Okay. Uh, maybe, uh, Trish, if you would, uh, for the purpose of discussion, at least on the insurance quote, I think it would be proper if you would make a motion to accept one of the quotes, then we can start from there and lead on to the other points that you brought up. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, as you can see in your packet, we do have included the quotes received including driver's assistance and then quotes received excluding driver's assistance. <clears throat> in both cases, uh, one company uh, was clearly, uh, and, and again, and Cami, thank you for all the work. Sorry, sometimes out, out of, out of uh, eye shot, I, I didn't give proper accolades to Cami for all her work on this. Um, but we have all of the, she has all of, and we've been provided all the supporting documentation that come, really these are apples to apples comparisons when you look across the insurance companies. So uh, we have one company, uh, the Cheeseman Agency, with, that would be providing the carrier Michigan Insurance Company with the uh, quote, including the driver's assistance program. And that's the one we would suggest, again, because it's from a risk and liability cost standpoint, it's marginally different than uh, excluding it. And that company, uh, in our mind, is the successful bidder that we would recommend uh, because it does provide comprehensive coverage and comes in at a, a, a good price. Um, I think it would be, uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't point out um, to the rest of the board and the public that we did run the traps through our own board for conflict of interest. We do have a member by chance has the same last name, Cheeseman, but we want to reassure we did run those conflict of interest traps that the relation there is so distant, 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 this is not a conflict of interest beyond distance. So we wanted to, I'll make that motion, but I thought I should clarify that we have done our background homework on that as well. So our recommendation would be the Cheeseman Agency, Michigan Insurance Company, for $50,689,000 quote. Thank you very much. There's a motion on the floor. Is there support to the motion? So moved. It's been moved and supported that we uh, take the quote from Cheeseman Michigan Insurance of $50,689. Is there any discussion on the motion? I have a question. What's, what's the garage premium? Well, I guess we'd have to break that right down under uh, uh, I don't know. Is Cammie on? Can she? And so, for instance, with Cheeseman, if we were to eliminate the driver assist program, that a garage keeper's premium would go away which would come down to the cost low, uh, noted below at $48,899. There's approximately, just looking at it real quickly, $1,700 difference. Mm -hmm. Good question. Thank you, Bill. So I have a, I have a question yes, also on Caroline. that. The garage premium, commercial general liability, and terrorism, does it specified separately under some of the agencies? for each, is that included in all of these, uh, are all of these premiums included? Like, um, so the Cheeseman Agency doesn't have the 109 or any amount for terrorism. Does that mean it's not included or there's no additional premium or how does that work? That is also a good question that I think for if Cami could answer. Sorry, Cami, I don't, my, my insurance knowledge only goes so deep and with. So with some of the premiums it is included with others, um, it is not included. And one company actually didn't charge anything extra for the driver assist program. 
So their premium stayed the same regardless whether we eliminated or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do do all of the policies, for instance, um, it's been recommended that we accept the Cheeseman Michigan insurance quote. Does that include commercial general liability and terrorism? Yes, it does. Um, I specifically answered questions um, in regards to the last. Um, um, incident that I had, um, Mr. Um, Cheeseman called me himself and asked um, on behalf of their um, company that they're underwriters and he, ex he asked me to explain our emergency plan and when I mentioned that we had, um, you know, Mackinac City Police, um, Mackinac County Police, we had the state police um, that answered all of his questions as to whether we had an emergency terrorism plan or not and so um, it is included in his premium um, it is not a separate charge okay thank you yep Amy I just wanted to commend the the committee for doing such a detailed job even though insurance maybe isn't in running it through your blood it is it is now um, you, you pretty much answered every question that I started to write down. You know, you, you answered everything. So thank you for that. And one of the things that I, I most admire that I'm grateful that you did is you reached out to, you know, our maintenance workers who do this to, to hear their ideas because those are some really great ideas. Mm -hmm. At first, I'm like, I love the director's idea, RFQ. We can kind of isolate those situations, especially if people are being treated unfairly. But if they have these ideas, they're vested into it and they'll advocate for themselves. And if it gets to a point where we just revisit it and things aren't working, then we can go down a different path. So thank you for doing that. That thanks goes to Kim and Julie, I believe, really, who looked into that, who, who polled, surveyed the, the staff. And that's where you get the ideas, so yeah. I definitely thank think you. you need to charge a fee for that no matter what because it will probably yeah. take care of some of the people who use it frivolously right mm -hmm. like they can be dependent because it's so easy but they'll force them to perhaps be more independent mm -hmm. thank you for those comments any other discussion under the, the motion and uh, seeing how this involves money Kim would you be kind enough to call a roll on it please if there's no further discussion, we'll call for the vote now. Everybody good with it? Yes. Thank you. Senator yes. 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 Thank you, Kim. Uh, let the record reflect it was a unanimous uh, decision. <coughs> Excuse me. Under new business, uh, we have a closed session to discuss a lawsuit. It would be appropriate at this time for a motion to uh, close the public meeting temporarily and enter into a closed session. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. I move that the board meet in closed session under section 8E of the Open Meetings Act to discuss pending litigation. I'll second that. It's been moved and duly supported that we temporarily uh, suspend the business of the public meeting and enter into closed session. And Kim, once again, would you, if there's no further discussion on the motion, which I don't believe there will be, uh, would you call the roll please on this? Yes. 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 Thank you, and uh, let the record reflect that was a unanimous decision to temporarily suspend the public meeting to enter into a closed meeting. With that being said, uh, we'll uh, take a couple minute recess until
Good afternoon, everybody. The Mackinac Bridge Authority uh, meeting will now re resume. I believe that there is to be a motion, Kathleen, to enter back into the uh, public meeting, or can I just call it to order? Um, have a motion. Okay. Do I have a motion to enter back into the public meeting of the Mackinac? I so move. Is there uh, support to that motion? Second that motion. A motion has been made that we are now entered back into the public uh, meeting of the Mackinac Bridge Authority. If there's no further discussion, uh, Kim, would you call a roll, please? Chairman Richards? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Trady? Yes. Kim yes. Um, Member Seabridge? Yes. Member Milligan? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, next order of business is is there any other? business of the Mackinac Bridge Authority that the members wish to take up now? Hearing none, I, I just want to reflect, though, that uh, Director Archibald was excused. He had to leave earlier. He asked that the amend or excuse me, the agenda be amended for lighting, so we will not take that up today. We'll take it up at a further date. Is there any other business to come before the authority? Hearing none, I'll open it up to public comment. Public comment. Hearing no public comment, a uh, motion would be in order to adjourn the Mackinac Bridge Authority meeting. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. It's been moved and supported that the Mackinac Bridge Authority be adjourned. No discussion on adjournment. All in favor say, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much.